Well, I think our traditional ideas of organisations are very hierarchical. They, they, in our minds, they look like pyramids or like long chains, or they're very mechanical and there's a top and there's a bottom. I think if you think about something like Wikipedia, it's much more like a sort of bird's nest where everyone is leaving just their piece of information and it's all building up by this delicately organised thing being put together. It's much more like a kind of community um, which needs to be governed in a kind of equitable and fair and legitimate way than a hierarchy. Um, and so I think all these things have some aspect of that. They're much more like self-governing communities than they are hierarchies in which you look up to someone to tell you what to do and someone's in charge in some very definite way. It enforces a much greater sense of self-discipline, self-control, self-governance. What's good about that? What's good about that, I think, is several things. Firstly, I think hierarchies are very inefficient. They're very slow moving. They concentrate power and information at the top. And they often deny people opportunities to take initiative, to share ideas and to seek solutions themselves. And they often rob people of a sense of agency. So one of the reasons that a lot of people hate working in large organisations is that they get treated very badly by them. One of the reasons they like these communities is that they feel they've got some measure of control, they get recognition for who they are, they can be themselves. They can also be very efficient, these, this new type of organisation with like, people selecting you know, their own, what, what, they, what they're doing, I suppose, being able to self-select. Just compare open source software and Microsoft. Microsoft spends billions on R&D to develop products which are less sophisticated than Linux. Uh, Linux is this large open source software writing community. Uh, Linux doesn't have a head office, it doesn't have any corporate jets, it doesn't have any away days, it doesn't have any um, human resources department, it has none of the stuff that large organisations have and yet it manages to produce something which is reliable and is used by governments all over the world. So in this self-organising model it can be very low cost and very efficient compared with top-down bureaucratic um, hierarchy. Why doesn't every organisation just change tomorrow? Well, it's not appropriate in every situation. It's not going to work in every situation, this kind of model. There, there might be things which require very technical knowledge or they might be highly risky or they might be highly capital intensive and so it doesn't work. So it's not a recipe that's going to work in every single situation. But I think across the spectrum from banking, education, health, through to entertainment and culture, you'll see a gradual move over the next two decades towards much more open models of organisation because they're better at mobilising intelligence, initiative, loyalty, engagement, participation. And these create more creative, dynamic organisations, often at lower cost. And that's a very, very powerful recipe. I mean, there should be a huge opportunity to use all this stuff, all the web, for public and social good, to allow people to collaborate in new ways to solve problems, whether it's to learn in different ways from people or to um, provide health advice and support or network together people for social care or um, use resources more efficiently to reduce their environmental impact. Um, I, don't, I think we've only just begun to scratch the surface of what's possible to use the web to connect people in new ways, to allow them to govern themselves and share in new ways to solve problems. And that's going to take quite a long time to work out how best to do that. But in principle, it could be a huge infusion of energy and dynamism into the social and public sector and indeed possibly into democratic politics. Well, the, the potential for transforming democracy is huge because people are leaving the formal democratic realm in their droves because they have little purchase on it, it doesn't seem to respond to them, they don't have a voice in it, uh, it's not talking about what they want to talk about. In contrast, the web allows people to have conversations with other people, to voice their views, to meet, to share, and to mobilise. And so all around the world you see now new forms of political mobilisation, whether they're very, very local campaigns about traffic or noise, to global campaigns about the environment and poverty, 
enabled and organized by the web. So the web is a, a really powerful tool for mobilizing people around things that they share and they care about. And that should have, and is, does seem to have, the effect of energizing, re-energizing democracy. And of course, in the developing world and in authoritarian regimes, the web is the only place where democratic debate takes place. So the big contests about democracy in China, in Vietnam, in Burma, the web is the place where democratic debate is taking place. It is the best hope for promoting democracy in many of these places.